Now at 10, a Joplin church says resources are dwindling as people seek warming centers during the bitter cold. Plus, federal funds paved the way for hundreds of area kids to visit a national monument. And a local theater hosts a showing of a film documenting the butterfly people phenomena in Joplin. The four states most watched news starts now. They're a bit warmer today, but the freezing temperatures aren't going away just yet. This is KOAM News at 10. I'm Dow Quick. Let's go straight to Chief Meteorologist Doug Hetty for a first look at the weather. Yeah, of course, another super cold day for us today. In fact, a record low during the morning hours. Minus 7 degrees. The old record was minus 6 set back in 2018. We only went to 13. That's 31 degrees below our average high for this time of the year. It's 11 in Joplin, it's 10 in Pittsburgh. We're going to drop back another degree or two, and then we'll actually start to rise a little bit toward dawn. 10 in Stockton, 8 in Anderson, 9 at Grand Lake. Parsons is sitting at 8 degrees. We still have wind chill factors, which are kind of near minus 10 outside for us right now. So uh, bundle up if you're going to be out. Clear skies. We're going to see clear skies tonight into the daytime hours for us tomorrow. Temperatures, you can see by 11 at 6. Then we start to warm up as we go through the morning hours. A warmer day for us tomorrow. We're going to look at that here in just a bit. Doug, we'll see you soon. Hey, don't forget, you can be the first to know about the day's weather with the KOIM Skywatch weather app. You can get severe weather updates sent straight to your phone, and it's absolutely free. You'll find it in the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store, the KOIM Skywatch weather app. A warming shelter in Miami, Oklahoma, plans to shut down its emergency operations. The Good Neighbor Coalition provides resources to community members in need. During the extreme cold, they've also been serving as a warming shelter. However, they're going to provide that service only until noon tomorrow. Officials say they'll monitor the community's need for them to open as a shelter again. Joplin's First Church of the Nazarene is providing shelter for people to get out of the harsh winter conditions. Recently, the church has hosted nearly 150 people, according to the pastor. The church provides a place to shower and three meals a day. However, due to high demand, resources are running low. The pastor is asking for donations or assistance from the community. We've been open now going on 12 days straight. Um, even even before some of the overnight shelters were open, we were open just because it was so cold and the wind chills were below what I thought was good for anybody to be out in. And so we've been going 12 days straight, seven to seven at this point. The church is requesting items for sandwiches, including meat and bread, also clothing and bedding. A couple of new Kansas grant programs announced today are intended to expand the arts in the state. They're the Arts Everywhere grants and general operating support grants. State leaders say they're going to help expand funding opportunities for a more diverse range of organizations and projects throughout the state. The goal is to help grow the Kansas economy. Federal grants going to pick up the tab for hundreds of grade school kids to visit the George Washington Carver National Monument in Diamond, Missouri. They say the money's going to pay for about 450 fourth graders from Kansas City and Springfield to travel to the George Washington Carver National Monument and participate in activities there this spring and summer. Park rangers will visit their classrooms before the field trips. NFL fans are not the only ones jumping between streaming services to watch football games these days. Area sports bars doing the same thing, and it's costing them a pretty penny. Old Chicago and Joplin and other area sports bars chose to not host the Chiefs wildcard playoff game due to Peacock's prices for establishments. The NFL package is not a cheap package that we purchased from DirecTV by any means. Um, but then to add on, you know, for a business, it's not cheap. It's not the $5.99 that you get charged through Peacock to watch the Chiefs game. Uh, we pay per seat in the restaurant, uh, per TV. The good news is that you can watch the next Chiefs game on Sunday right here on KOIM. A new documentary looks at a phenomenon that seemed to affect children in Joplin following the 2011 tornado. It's called the Butterfly People, and folks in Webb City today had a chance to view it at the Route 66 Theater. 
The documentary involves first and third person accounts of several children reporting butterflies helping them in some way following the tornado. That people would be encouraged um, and then cause them to think, you know, a little bit, what was that? It's really for everyone to decide for themselves what that was. But I hope everybody who sees it will, will go away inspired by the story. So I'd say when we're tested, it shows the quality of people we really were. And that event tested us. And I think that we all proved that people are good and there's a loving spirit and um, that, that we are all better, better people. And so we, out of the bad, good comes. The theater will host another showing of the Butterfly People on Thursday at 7.30 p.m. Later in sports, it's cold outside, but the action on the basketball court is red hot. John has today's highlights from the Tony Dubray basketball tournament. But first, bitter cold temperatures can mean more need for firefighters. The moment you call. Former President Donald Trump's landslide win last night in Iowa means next week's primary in New Hampshire is even more important to Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley. Skyler Henry has the latest. In New Hampshire, people waited for hours in the sleet and snow to hear former President Donald Trump speak the day after his big win in Iowa. And I know that New Hampshire will never let us down, just like in 2016. You remember that? We came in here and we won in a landslide. And I think that he's going to be able to secure our border. We have a fentanyl issue that's extremely bad here. We've lost a lot of friends. Trump set his focus on next Tuesday's primary in the Granite State, along with Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, who came in a distant second in the Iowa caucuses. They threw everything but the kitchen sink at us. Followed by former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley. We came out strong. Now we want to finish New Hampshire and come out even stronger. Haley is hoping to tap New Hampshire's independent or undeclared voters who make up more than 39 percent of the electorate. I believe the New Hampshire primary is going to be far more indicative of the general election and Nikki's going to resonate with undeclared voters like myself. DeSantis appeared in a televised town hall from New Hampshire late Tuesday. And I think what I represent is somebody that has delivered uh, on those key conservative policies that we've all been wanting to see in Washington, D.C. Vivek Ramaswamy, who dropped out of the race Monday night after his fourth place Iowa showing, joined Trump on stage to express his support. In return, the crowd chanted, VP, VP. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Washington. Trump plans to campaign in New Hampshire nearly every day this week. Donald Trump returned to a courtroom today to the penalty phase of the New York civil defamation trial. The jury will determine how much Trump should have to pay writer E. Jean Carroll for comments he made in 2019 denying that he sexually assaulted her. The judge has already ruled the comments were defamatory. Last year, a jury found Trump liable for sexual abuse and defamation in a separate case for separate comments awarding Carroll $5 million in damages. Trump maintains he does not know Carroll. Authorities say a shooting death at the Kansas Army Ammunition Plant in Oswego, Kansas was an accident. Investigators say a man and woman had been deer hunting and returned to their pickup. As the husband, Derek Hall, attempted to unload the gun, it discharged, striking his wife, Christina Hall. She later died at the hospital. With the frigid temperature and winter weather not going away, some schools and businesses might be closed on certain days. If you want your closings to show up on our website or scroll across our stations, make sure to sign up for our closing service. To do so, you go to our website, you click on the closings banner. You can also call our front desk from 9 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. Monday through Friday for assistance. The city of Neotishay, Kansas, welcomes a new city administrator. The city hired Brogan Jones last fall, and he began serving in the position yesterday. He spent the past seven months as city administrator in Marion, Kansas. Jones was a code enforcement building inspector in Lyons, Kansas, for two and a half years. More people need firefighters when the temperatures fall, but this Arctic air and snow can provide firefighters with some unique obstacles. Officials, however, say firefighters brace for any call at 
anytime. Jordan Fremstead has that story now from Oklahoma City. Lower temperatures. It can be a challenge. Means more people need firefighters. It makes for an interesting day for sure. Oklahoma City Fire Department Shift Commander David Shearer's team. Absolutely. Embraces Mother Nature's painful winter breath. We have a plan of operation, you know, that helps us to deal with uh, response in the cold weather. Firefighters deal with the same hazards we deal with when the weather gets like this, including ice. Just slips and falls, slipping on the ice. Water from their trucks freezes into a hazard. It makes for a slippery uh, work site. However, they bring the right tools. So we uh, use roof ladders to help us uh, maintain traction on the roofs. Snow and ice on the road can slow them down. So it takes us a little bit longer to get on scene. Add frozen hydrants to the obstacle list. And sometimes they get ice buildup on the hydrants. Preparations with equipment help keep them on schedule. While Shearer's staff respects winter's punch, people on the road forget things can go wrong. Well, you don't think too much about it. Firefighters respond to accidents where people didn't wear the right clothes. And then you're stuck out in the cold for quite a bit of time. Nonetheless, firefighters fight the cold. Oh! for whoever needs their service. Just being able to help other people and make sure that you know, other people have a better day, that's, that's usually one of the things that motivates a lot of our firefighters. One easy way to help firefighters, watch out for those flashing lights on the roads. Drivers should give firefighters enough space to pass safely. A little bit later, a local boys and girls club gives kids a place to go to get out of the cold and out of the house. Plus another cold night for us tonight, but we are going to start to warm back up. Details coming up next. Well, of course, it turned out to be a cold one for us today. Record lows this morning of minus 7 degrees. Only got up to 13 during the afternoon. If we look at January so far, the first half of the month, you can actually see our temperatures uh, have been majority below normal. We've had eight days below normal, six days above, and two just sitting in that normal range. But I think the second half of the month is looking a little bit better. Cornell Arts and Entertainment Complex, downtown Joplin, looking northeast, you can see the flags blowing. So that's gonna give us a little bit of wind chill, but of course, temperatures are cold. 7 Cassville, 10 in Carthage, 10 Miami, 13 in Chanute. And if we broaden the horizon, you can actually see uh, the Arctic air still very much in place, but slowly shifting off toward the east. Look at our upper level winds out of Canada, northwest to southeast. So it allows that Arctic air to slide in. But as we go through the next couple days, we kind of go more from a west to east orientation. So the Arctic air retreats, just not for long, only for about a day and a half. Then we get a system that drops in on Thursday, and this brings that Arctic air right back in place. Thankfully, it doesn't sit here too long, just a couple days, retreats by the time we get to Sunday. Then as we go through next week, we get a flow out of the southwest, a warmer flow, so we get some showers in here, actually two or three rounds of showers Next week, we're not going to have to worry about the Arctic air. We're not going to have to worry about frozen pipes. We're not going to have to worry about any snow. We're only going to have to have or worry about some rain, which we can take. All right, for us tonight, southerly winds kind of 5 to 15. So that means wind chill factors, they're going to be low once again. Right now, kind of minus 5 to minus 10. This is where they're going to stay. At least over the next couple hours, they'll start to at least get a little bit better for us tomorrow. Wind chill factors by the middle of the afternoon will be right around 20, which of course is cold, but it's better than what we have seen. Clear skies right now. Here's our next storm system, which will roll in on Thursday. So I'm going to do a whole bunch. It will bring that Arctic air back. But besides that, maybe a few flurries, a couple snow showers. That would be just about it. All right, let's go through tonight. Warming to near 30 by noon, which is good. 30 is good by the afternoon. 36 Stockton, 34 in Neosho, 35 in Miami, Parsons up to about 35. Clouds increase tomorrow night, could get around to flurries late tomorrow night, but still Thursday, I think 36, 37 degrees for a high. However, Thursday night, that colder air filters in, a few light little snow showers, and then once we get into Friday morning, we're right back down near 10 degrees and we only heat up 
into the upper teens for highs. For your Wednesday, 29 by noon, 35 during the afternoon, which is pretty good. Still 10 degrees below average, but way better than what we have seen. 36 on Thursday, only 19 Friday, down to 3 Saturday morning, but quickly warming up near 40 by Sunday. 40s all next week on and off showers. Yeah, 40s? I'll tell you, 30s sound pretty good. I know. Right Tomorrow's going to be almost shorts weather. Yeah, balmy <laughs> out there. <laughs> Thanks, Doug. Hey, the Boys and Girls Club of Southwest Missouri opened its doors for some snowbound kids today. The club opened for all members from 7 this morning until 6 this evening. For parents, the club provided a safe place to send the kids who might have been cooped up in the house for too long. We rallied some staff who were available to hang out with the kids today just so they could move and run around and parents could go to work because everyone's been stuck home since Christmas break, basically. The kids have hardly had any normal school days. The organization says about 80 kids showed up ranging from kindergartners to teenagers. Still ahead, the 51st annual Tony Dubray Basketball Classic tips off at Liberal. John Dales has highlights from several quarterfinal matchups and more. That's up next in sports. True belongs. Hey, welcome into sports. I'm John Dales. The bitter cold has done its best to limit high school sports in the area. Now, even though in the winter most games are happening indoors, there's still have been a fair amount of cancellations this week. But this afternoon, the 51st annual Tony Debray Classic tips off at Liberal. Colgan boys basketball playing Thomas Jefferson in the 1-8 matchup in the opening round. From the opening tip, it's all Panthers. Tristan Voss knocks the opening tip off ahead to Jack Schremer. He scores the first points of the evening and Colgan wouldn't surrender that lead the rest of the game. Schremer gets a steal and kickstarts a fast break to Karsten Simmons, who hits the layup. Panthers score the first 10 points of the game. Ethan Ranger, with a foot on the line, gets the Cavs on the scoreboard, but midway through the first. This game belongs to Colgan, though. Voss tips the ball. That forces another turnover. He gets the outlet pass ahead to Gus Keller. That's another easy layup for Colgan. Now Panthers leading 22-5. Keller with another tough finish in the lane. Panthers dominate in their tournament opener 66-16. They take down Thomas Jefferson. The host team of the tournament, Liberal, on its home floor facing Sheldon. We start from the opening tip again. Liberal wins it. Luke Bott finds himself open on the elbow, nails a jumper that gives the Bulldogs the first points of the night. A couple possessions later, Sheldon trailing by three, but the sophomore Aiden Bogart ties things up with a nice shot. Liberal back up by two. Bott in the same position, takes a dribble inside this time and connects on the floater, gets the shooter's touch. Then, Bulldog defense gets a steal, and the senior, Justin Payne, knows exactly what to do with it. Goes strong to the rim and scores with a hand in his face. Liberal up by eight. Late in the first quarter, lead trim to six. Payne to bot for three. Nothing but net. Bulldogs goes to a victory in this quarterfinals over Sheldon. 68-28. They'll play Colgan on Thursday. Meanwhile, in the other gym, temperatures about 20 or 30 degrees colder for Galena and Northeast. Offenses understandably starting cold, 7-7 seven seven, tied after the first quarter. That's when Jack Perry starts to heat up. He hits the three that puts the Bulldogs up by seven midway through the second. Couple of minutes later, Perry again, fall away jumper, puts Galena up by nine after he connects. Vikings need a response, they get it in the form of a Jonah Sparks corner three. That cuts the lead to just four. Right before halftime now, Galena trying to stretch its lead even further. You know who they're going to, it's Perry again in the corner, takes a couple of steps in. He rises and scores from the baseline. Vikings hang around all four quarters, but Galena goes on to win 56 to 49. In this afternoon, the MIAA announces Marquis English is the Athlete of the Week for men's basketball. This comes after English averaged a double-double with 18 points and 12 rebounds in Pitt State's two conference wins over Nebraska Kearney and Fort Hayes State on Thursday and Saturday. 
English is the third gorilla to earn MIAA Athlete of the Week honors so far this season. Back to that tournament at Liberal, though, I mentioned cold temps in one of the gyms, but I do appreciate, you know, a lot of people appreciate that we're there, that Liberal doing everything it can to get these teams back out onto the floor and have these games played tonight after being pushed back another day. Yeah, fans showing up at least in some number despite the cold and maybe a little bit drafty in the gym, but it's hard to keep that out when True. it's temperature like yes. this. We'll be right back. Fans of the Kansas City Chiefs aren't just talking about the team's Super Bowl aspirations. No, they're also infatuated with head coach Andy Reid's frozen mustache. Saturday's game, of course, it was the coldest game in Arrowhead Stadium history, and it was so cold, as many of you saw, Reid's mustache froze like an icicle. Well, now a Kansas bakery is memorializing the iconic look with an Andy Reid cake featuring that frozen stash. We've gotten a lot of feedback on social media about it, a lot of laughs. We've actually been talking about maybe some cookies or a cake with a cracked helmet on it. You never know what we're going to come up with here at McLean's. That'll sell. They'll all sell. McLean's Bakery and Market in Waldo says response to that cake has been overwhelming. You know, as I watch that game and I see Andy Reid's mustache with icicles yeah. hanging on, I think this guy's going to get frostbite or something. It, you know, why... I understand, you know, he's speaking into a microphone and maybe he doesn't want to cover up, but you think, good gosh, that's yeah. tough. It's going to be painful. Watching that game in my 70-degree house felt really nice. <laughs> I'll definitely say that. All right, another cold one for us tonight, but we get above freezing tomorrow. High temp, 35. Final sports notes. College basketball action tomorrow. Missouri Southern Women's Hoops going for its ninth win in a row. Well, thanks for joining us. Morning show at 5 a.m. Be careful out there and let's make it a great. Come on.